And at that time, this is after the council of five or six years, and he was demodé, you know, he, he was old-fashioned. And uh, but I was very impressed by him. And uh, here we are in the city of San of San Irenaeus, you know, right next to his cathedral yeah. or his church. And uh, so he became my mentor. And you know, he was uh, he was uh, injured in World War One. Thank Seriously, you. right? His serious head, very oh, serious head, yeah. shrapnel head injury. In fact, yeah. he probably has a record of being the longest, uh, the Jesuit, the longest in the because he was in the first year in office okay. <laughs> before the war started. Yeah. The war began, he was five years mobilized, you know, uh, in World War One, and then he came out and finished his second year. But because of that injury, he couldn't always go to classes when he was studying philosophy and theology. Yeah. Okay. So he stayed in his room. He read the entire Patrologia Latina et Greca by Minya. Minya. Now, for those who don't know, this is a great uh, scholar of the mid 19th century yeah. who collected all the writings of the fathers, the Latin fathers, and they were in Latin, and then the Greek fathers in Greek with Latin translation. It's it's a hundred volumes, right. I think, something like hundred. A library shelf, you know, yeah. shelf. So he read the whole thing. Yeah. You know, just think about that. I mean, immersing himself, in, and that really led to him, I think, being such a profound thinker and a great mind of the church. And when you met him, so it's in the early seventies. He would at that time have been in 76 his years seventies, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Having been through an awful lot of drama in his own life, beginning with World War One, the Jesuits, emerging as a major theological figure, and then enduring a lot of. Uh, Harassment, you might say, from people within the church, even being silenced effectively. That's right? right. In what the 1950s, just before the council, it was just actually. He wrote *Sur Naturel* in 1946. Okay, yeah. Right after the war, and yeah. it was paper was very short. In fact, I saw one of the first printings of this thing, where the the first half was on shiny paper, mm -hmm. the second half on kind of rough paper. So. It wasn't well distributed, yeah. but there were people in Rome that were upset with what he did, and they, they had him uh, silenced, yeah. Gary Goulagrange played a role, didn't he, in some of that? I think so, but it was Boyer, B-O-Y-E-R, I think he was the main player in that. Not Boyer. Boyer right. was different. Right. But, uh, you know, Delubac is up for canonization, right? He's being considered. He is. His cause has been introduced. That's right. I think if he's canonized, and I, I pray that he is, it would be because of those years, right, where he showed extraordinary patience. He didn't go into open rebellion against the church. He didn't, you know, engage in polemics. He, he, you know. No, in fact, I heard from from Father Bernard Cespoy, who was a professor sure. there uh, at the same when I was there, uh, that when this happened, uh, Delubac had not been teaching, but had been writing, and he he was told by the general uh, at the behest of the Pope to cease teaching, which he wasn't doing anyway, and sees writing. Yeah. And uh, in those days, maybe still, uh, after lunch, which is the main meal, they go down into the basement area, and they have these little demi tasks of coffee. And, and cigars, usually. Yeah, cigars, yeah. coffee, which is thick as, as <laughs> right. like uh, engine. <laughs> like taking medicine, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, they were all very upset, and they were complaining about the pope, you know, and they were criticizing the pope for doing this, and Dulebach left in tears saying, I can't have you criticize the Pope in my presence. Is that right? He left. That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> the story I've heard along those lines is at the council itself. He's on the steps of St. Peter's with Hans Kung, and Hans Kung was just going on about how terrible this had been, what had been done to Dulebach, how unfair it was, and how the church, and, and Dulebach's response was, elle est quand même notre mère. But she's still yeah. our mother, yeah. you know, and I thought that captured the spirituality beautifully. He yeah. wasn't in favor of his being silenced, but he accepted it. 